Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm doing Mars entry testing with my wraparound service module assembly as well as my Starship mod. So this is the first time I'm gonna be bringing Starship into Mars' atmosphere actually. I probably should have tested that out earlier as it turns out. But first, first of all the wraparound service module being launched on the Kasei rocket with 8 Sajita boosters because we previously tested that 4 were not enough. And so here we are making orbit successfully, though still a little bit short of delta V, but we can make that up with the wraparound service module itself. And so here I'm discovering that we are actually not at the right window, and so I'm just going to leave it in orbit and come back to it in order to get the right timing for the transfer. Uh, for some reason, transfer window planner lied to me, but anyway, uh, separating off the upper stage of the Kasei rocket and there we go with the wraparound service module, the lander and the inflatable heat shield. Here I am orienting for the sun with our solar panel and I did change the radiator texture now. So that's fixed up. Though uh, I have decided that I need an extra part as we do a little correction here because I missed the mid-course correction. I did this all during live streams and I was talking away with my audience and I missed the mid-course correction and I ended up doing it in Mars SY which is much more costly which means this whole thing is going to be lighter. But you see how the engines are sort of close to the lander. I think I need an extra structure there for placing the engines so that the thrust won't maybe impinge on the lander. I'll see about that. So I'm thinking of another part there as we bring it into the Mars atmosphere. The problem is we're coming in really fast. At Mars SOI entry, we were 9,466 meters per second. And here we're entering Mars atmosphere at 10,000. Now, part of the problem there might have been the fact that we were also tilting and the heat shield wasn't properly covering the wraparound service module, so it exploded. But at this speed we can't possibly capture properly. It's just not a proper transfer. So I just didn't do a very good job of planning out the transfer in the first place. So, But that's a good reference for you. If you find that you're entering Mars' SOI at 9,000 meters per second, don't do it. Um, really, at Mars' SOI entry you should be going at about 5,000 or less. So if you are not going at 5,000 or less at that point, you have probably picked a bad transfer window or a bad transfer situation and you are going to die. So just a warning. Uh, so here we go again and this is the next transfer window and I think this is a better opportunity overall and it costs less delta V though we also had less delta V in the stage left over after launch so it all balanced out. We still needed to do a little bit from the service module. While I was a little bit more on it on this attempt it turned out that the game was going to have some nasty little tricks up its sleeve for me. And the first of those is the fact that it somehow broke my solar panel on my service module. Now, I actually set in the configuration file this line that says is breakable and I set it to equals false. So it wasn't supposed to be a breakable solar panel because it's just a surface mount solar panel. But somehow the game broke it anyway. So I had to turn on infinite electricity, so that's full disclosure. And also, when we entered Mars SOI, somehow all, most of our liquid oxygen in our lander was lost. Now, I expect some boil off, but there are MLI layers to mitigate that. You can see the methane hasn't uh, boiled off hardly at all, but like most of the liquid oxygen is gone. Now, the problem with that is we are lighter than we need to be. It's actually making it easier for us to capture into orbit around Mars if we have all that gone. So anyway, here we are entering Mars's atmosphere. Our SOI entry speed was only 4,520 meters per second this time, so half what it was last time. So that gives you an idea how important it is to get your transfer right, otherwise you're going to be coming in twice as fast as you otherwise would be. So keep that in mind. But here we are pretty well situated. We're not wiggling around, and it seems like the heat shield is protecting the wraparound service module properly. I also increased the size of the inflatable heat shield just a little bit, tweak scaling it, of course. So that helped possibly. 
it's little tweaks like that that require me to relaunch it because I wanted to know that the rocket could uh, carry it with the Delta V that we need and all that business. It does make it a little bit heavier. Anyway, here we are. We have captured this time. That is good. We burned off enough speed. And it's a little bit high on the apoapsis, but it's fine. We can refine that. Uh, we came in at the same periapsis, by the way, 46 kilometers. And here I am separating off the lander. The wraparound surface module and the capsule will get into a full orbit. So there it is, boosting the periapsis. And it still has enough to get home, actually, after all the burns. So good times. I mean, on its own. If we had another HAB module, the HAB module would have to supply some extra fuel if it wanted to uh, get home too. But here I am testing out the landing, but the problem is the parachute's deployed a little bit late, and... Yeah. Yeah, I need to set the parachutes to deploy a little bit sooner. I don't need drogue chutes because the heat shield is so much huger than the lander in this case that it produces a lot of drag and that's enough to deploy the main chutes without having separate drogue chutes. Well, I learned enough about that setup to proceed and do further operations with it. Next up was Starship. I'm launching on my Daenerys Aerospike SSTO because I didn't want to refuel it in orbit. Of course, people will ask, why don't you just cheat it into orbit uh, if you're going to do it this way? And that's because I like launches, basically. So even though I'm launching it on this Aerospike SSTO, uh, it's still launch, and I like launches, so we'll go with it. Anyway, the Aerospike SSTO is nifty. Of course, it doesn't allow Starship to be fully fueled. Uh, Starship is only at 880 tons, so it's underfueled right now, but it'll be enough for our purposes. Uh, we're not bringing it back. I mean, it, it still wouldn't be able to come back directly, but uh, even underfueled like this, it can transfer to Mars and land. Anyway, we're separating off, and here we are making the transfer. I left some gimbling on the vacuum engines. We just pretend that they have differential throttling. I figure that's fair enough. And here we are entering Mars SOI at only 2,600 meters per second. Now, while that's a quarter of what we did on the first try with the wraparound service module, that doesn't translate to a quarter when we actually hit Mars' atmosphere. It's about a half of what we had on that attempt when we hit Mars' atmosphere. So you don't get that much difference. But yeah, still significant. Unfortunately, Starship did not seem to be controlling itself very well. Uh, not well at all, and I concluded that maybe I need to move the center of mass a little bit in the configuration file. I don't know if that'll solve it or not. The back fins, the big fins are not configured right, they're not yaw, you know, they're not tilting the way that they're supposed to, but that wouldn't hurt in this case. We seem to have a lot of trouble controlling roll, incidentally, so the fact that they're actually allowing control for roll right now means that... Um, yeah, we've got bigger problems. <laughs> so here I am uh, using MechJeb's tool to see the COM. And I decided to see how it would do coming in tail first. First of all, I would bring it into a full orbit. I wanted to try this out on the daylight side instead of coming in on the nighttime side. So we can see what's going on. But we saw that it obviously had instability coming in sort of like a space shuttle. Though at a higher pitch, more straightly belly first. But I decided that after getting into a lower orbit, I would bring it down on the daylight side and go tail first and see how it does like that. But that's a long shot. Up, but of course, going belly first, given all the spinning around that we had last time, would guarantee disaster. Uh, this way almost guarantees disaster because we don't have a lot of surface area to slow down with. And But also going tail first revealed this roll and also control issues. You can see the little blue dot is the center of lift and the red dot is the center of mass. And it's weird. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's sort of right with the center of mass, you know, for closer to the tail, so that would be balanced. But with all the, I guess, control surfaces going around, it complicates things. And now the center of lift is in the wrong place and the craft is sort of wobbly very wobbly yeah and we're going too fast and again that's because we don't have enough surface area to slow us down and we definitely don't have enough delta v here to slow us down now if starship was fully fueled would it have enough to slow down here 
maybe, but it's probably not what it's intending on doing. It'll go belly first to use more of its surface area to slow down instead of using the engines like this. But then we have to do the flip too. But yeah, this is destined for demise and I need to work on this quite a bit more to make it work properly. I think maybe when I looked at the center of mass and center of lift before, I didn't take into consideration this particular fin configuration to in the SBH or something. I don't know. But yeah. Oh, so I don't have landing legs on here right now. Need to figure that part out. If the landing legs are really heavy, maybe that'll drag the center of mass back. Who knows? Um, yeah, this is not going to go very well. So anyway, that is a bit of Mars entry testing and some of the interesting foibles that you may encounter. Be careful about those transfers is basically the most important thing. But I have a little bit of work to do with my own mods, so I'll get to it and I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.